Praise the Lord. My name is Augustine and this is Men Must Pray. So in a previous video I did about um, speaking in tongues for long, I ended it with a promise uh, that I will try and explain more about spiritual encounters. And uh, this is the video that now goes into detail about spiritual encounters. Now, I've had quite a number of spiritual encounters and um, I know I cannot fit all the knowledge I would want to share in one video. So if I will need to make more videos, I will definitely do that. So today, I'll see how much I can cover in this video. So the whole purpose of uh, talking about these spiritual encounters is to help you be familiar or to give you some level or some background knowledge of spiritual encounters so that when you start diving deep into speaking in tongues and having these encounters they don't get you by surprise or at least you know what to do for me when i started having those spiritual those encounters while speaking in tongues i was part of a fellowship that uh, other people were also having those encounters and so they had given us some background knowledge about them so they were not very strange and also we had people who would actually help us to interpret what was going on during those encounters so that they didn't sound or they didn't look very strange to us so i don't know where you fellowship i don't know if you have other people around you who will understand these encounters and so i want to uh, give you some background and also how you handle them when you start experiencing them so that you don't panic and find yourself in a very tight spot because uh, spiritual encounters they are usually uh, they have a lot of a lot of strange things that come with them that can really scare you so I'll start with uh, the prompting of the Holy Spirit so before any encounter usually the Holy Spirit will prompt you because uh, we understand that God does not force us into things and so for a spiritual and for you to have a spiritual encounter the Holy Spirit has to get your permission and that's why he will usually come to prompt you so when he prompts you you have to acknowledge that prompt you have to accept that prompt for him to now take you to the next step so the prompt um, sometimes uh, it can be it can be a little scary and quite a number of people do turn down those uh, prompts of the Holy Spirit to have an encounter. So this is how it usually happens. Uh, when you are either praying in tongues or worshiping, you will first start having um, some kind of numbness. So you will start feeling a little kind of shaky you okay you will feel uh your body shaking uh, sometimes you will feel weak in your joints if you are standing you'll find it difficult to stand sometimes you you see but there is just some kind of um unusual peace that comes over you and some kind of excitement let me call it excitement so it happens differently for in different circumstances but most of the time it's uh, either body shaking or uh, a lot of very strong emotions in your heart uh, be it sorrow or be it uh, great joy they are usually very strong emotions and then there is peace all of a sudden you feel like there is some kind of cloud covering you when you are just praying and speaking in tongues. So when that begins to happen, it's usually um, that you've prayed and gotten to a level whereby uh, you are pure enough to host the presence of God. And so when that happens, it's usually what the angels that are coming to prepare you. Because they are, they are those angels called, they are the angels of the presence of the Lord. So basically, they are the angels that go to confirm if uh, if God can uh, can if God can dwell in that place. So they go before Him to set the stage. Just the same way uh, we have um, 
we have what police officers who who go before the president to make sure that everything is okay and it's good enough for the president to to come so the same way there are those angels of the presence of god who do that work so when those when you are praying and inviting god's presence of course it's those angels who will first come to confirm that uh, you have you are ready to handle or to host god and so they will come so when they come you will usually feel that uh, because when they come you will not see them because they are in the higher dimensions higher realms you will feel their presence but you will not see them so that presence is what i'm now trying to describe as some kind of uh peace that all of a sudden just comes over you and sometimes there is some kind of body shaking because your spirit can actually uh can actually perceive those angels but of course your body cannot so you when you are your body will only be reacting to whatever the spirit is perceiving yeah so when that happens usually the holy spirit will uh he will prompt you and this i remember very clearly because for me very many times when i before i, I used to have those encounters most of the time i would have those encounters and uh, they would uh, be I don't want to call them violent but they will be uh they will involve a lot of body movements and spinning and uh jumping and rolling on the floor and all that and all that so they used to involve that and I remember very like very clearly the holy spirit would uh usually prompt me and then I would uh take my phone because I used to have my phone in my pocket so I'll take my phone out of my pocket and put it in my bag and everything and once I do that then I'll just stand and let the holy spirit now take over and it happened very many times like the holy spirit never uh pushed me into an into an explosive encounter before he prompted me so every time he would prompt me of course I would prepare myself a little take away my phone and all that sometimes i would even if i was seated in uh, a very tight spot i would move into some kind of aisle where there is sufficient space to spin around and and do all the things that the holy spirit wants me to do so the holy spirit will usually prompt you before any encounter it is demons that um forcefully throw people on the ground and without their permission because of course demons don't seek your permission for them they seek to just hurt you so for them they don't seek your permission but the holy spirit is gentle so he will usually uh, ask for your permission so uh, you may be wondering now how will i know that the holy spirit is seeking my permission so this is what happens you will usually feel kind of um waves because when uh the when an encounter is about to begin it usually comes in forms of waves so the, the way you will see one wave come as like um a slower wave then it will retreat then another stronger and stronger and stronger wave they will be coming so what happens is that um uh, when the first wave comes you'll feel some uh some kind of shaky you'll feel uh, a little shaken and then of course if you continue praying because usually when you are praying that like that happens when you're praying so if you continue praying then the next wave that will come will be stronger than the previous one so if you continue praying the next one will come stronger so until now uh, comes a last wave that completely just takes you over so what you need to understand is that when you receive that first wave is the holy spirit uh, letting you know that you are about to Uh, to enter into some serious encounter so what you need to do is just prepare yourself and if you are already prepared and you want to go ahead with it you just continue praying and so what happens is that uh those waves will just come you just continue praying so those waves will come and then if you continue praying uh, the last wave will automatically just come and take you over so that you will no longer need to pray anymore after that because you have already got into a level whereby uh the press you have made are sufficient to just get you into that encounter so that is one thing that i see many people get confused because i've seen very many people who are resistant the holy spirit is moving them or even like during the time of worship 
these people are moved to tears and they begin shaking their bodies but they were praying but then they they get scared and they stop praying and of course the holy spirit now uh, doesn't bring any more waves to to take you over into some higher encounter because those people now get scared of what is coming and it's true if you don't know that it's the holy spirit doing it you will be of course resistant and you'll be very fearful that is the holy spirit and you will never get hurt i think that's also something that people fear there are people who just fear falling down and so when they feel like their knees are starting to feel weak then they um they stop praying and they try to de-escalate the situation but of course what you need to do if you want encounters is that when you get to that point where you are feeling scared and all that you yeah, just pray and uh push yourself just to continue praying and then you will get into those encounters so the second thing about spiritual encounters is observation because most of the early encounters they are encounters whereby you are just an observer so that you don't have to speak you don't have to do anything so you just be seeing things or uh, you just be feeling and experiencing So these ones are usually just introductory introductory encounters because you see the spiritual realm and the spiritual world is very wide and there are so many things but now when you are new to the encounters of course there are many there are many things you don't understand and so God also knows that so what happens is that you will only be uh, taken into those encounters for you to experience them and just be familiar with how the spiritual world works so usually this will is where now you'll just mostly be doing the observation where you'll just be seeing sometimes they just take you to a garden so you just feel the peace in that garden sometimes they show you you may just see some very bright light so so that you just get used to seeing bright light and then sometimes you may you may feel uh the sensation of flying or dancing and those kind of things so usually you are just being introduced to some of the spiritual sensations that you may not be so familiar with so once you have several of such encounters then i will start getting to a place whereby you can now start like having real real encounters whereby you can actually converse with angels but at first it will just be uh we are taking you so just go and observe so just go and see then for other people this may happen in dreams so that you may pray in tongues and then you have a dream a dream whereby you are flying sometimes you have a dream whereby um you are going to do evangelism so you are flying from one place to another sometimes if if you are called into the like ministry of 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 uh, spiritual warfare you may find yourself going to fight demons and fight uh, spirits usually they may come in form of animals like dogs so you may find yourself surrounded with dogs and you are beating them or trying to fight them and all that and then of course in the spirit you move by flying so in those kind of dreams you usually fly from one place to another you will not walk from one place to another so once you start getting accustomed to how spiritual uh, how the spiritual world operates then of course now more and more responsibility can be given to you and then you now start experiencing deeper and deeper revelations so this continues until you get to a point whereby you are accustomed and you know quite a lot about spiritual about spiritual encounters to a point that now you can appear before god so appearing before god of course is the highest level of encounter that you can have so that one of course you also have to be to be taught about how to speak to god and how to behave yourself before god because you see in the presence of god there are things that uh we may we take for granted while we are away from the presence of god as compared to when we are close to god one of those things is um the words we speak because you see the way god is faithful is that whatever you ask he will grant it to you so when you are appearing before god you see you have to be thoroughly trained to speak the right thing because if you appear before god and speak the wrong thing then god is obligated to do it because god is faithful to his own word where he says that ask anything in my name and i will do it so you ask anything he will do it for you sometimes it may not be the thing that you wished for 
like what happened with the children of Israel. You see, like for them, at that time, God was, like they were walking in the presence of God. God was walking with them in the wilderness. Then what did they say? They said, you brought us out of Egypt to kill us in the wilderness. And you see, because they say that thing in the presence of God, it had to be fulfilled. Like God was obligated to fulfill it because they were in his presence and they had made a request to him. So even though the request was was uh, was uh, something that God would not want to do uh, for them because it is the law of God and because these are his children and they have asked for it, he had to fulfill it. So that's why he had to kill them. That's why he told Moses, um, I have heard what the, what uh, the children of Israel have said and I will do according to what they have said. So this is why most of the time you may see like, um, you are being restricted from having encounters. And it's also the reason why encounters are not just given to any random believer because of how risky things can get when you are very close to the presence of God. But um, before you get to that level, the beginning levels and the, and the lower levels are much easier to just handle because most of the time you are not doing really anything. So you are just enjoying what is going on and all that. Yeah, then the third thing is about interpretation. So there are spiritual things when you start having encounters. There are spiritual things you will see that are strange. A simple example is uh, uh, what the Bible talks to us, like what the Bible describes the, the cherubim. You see, normally we are used to seeing creatures that have one head. And uh, you have encounters and you realize that there are some creatures that have what? Uh, have four heads. And of course, the natural, like, the natural reaction will be like, this is something evil. And you will want to just never want to see it again. But you see, those are creatures that serve in the presence of God. Very holy creatures, but they have four heads. So what's going to happen in the spiritual realm is that you are going to see things that are... Um, are out of the ordinary and uh, they are scared because you are seeing them for the first time. Now this is where um, this is like where uh, a boundary is drawn between people who, who, who know what they are doing and people who who are casual. Because what happens is that when you start getting deep into the spirit, there are things that you must come across. Like one, if you start seeing angels, then you are also, because the ability to see angels is also the same ability to see demons. So if you see angels and how lovely they are, then you are also what, in a position to see demons and how ugly they are. So if you, are, if, if you cannot handle to see how ugly demons are, then of course God will and not also enable you to see angels. So when you are asking God to see angels, remember that what God knows that what if you can see angels, you can also see demons. If you can speak to angels and converse with them in a spiritual encounter, then you can also do it. Demons can also converse to you. Like they can also converse with you. And so this is where it gets very scary. You see. So for people who want to like have an encounter with Jesus, if you get to a level whereby you can have an encounter and speak to Jesus, then you are at a level whereby you can also have an encounter and uh, the devil speaks to you. Remember like somebody like Jesus, he was at a level whereby he would have a, like a spiritual experience whereby the Holy Spirit would carry him. That's why we are told in the Bible that the Holy Spirit, uh, after he was baptized, uh, the Holy Spirit led him into the wilderness. He carried him into the wilderness. And you see, when he was in the wilderness, when the devil came to tempt him, how did the devil tempt him? The devil also carried Jesus. So imagine the devil carrying you to a to like on top of like on top of on top of a cliff, and the devil carrying you to a different place. So Jesus was at a level whereby the Holy Spirit could carry him to different places. He was in the physical body just like we are, and he had attained that level where he could be carried by the Holy Spirit which today we may call teleporting. And then 
that same level means that the devil also can also be what carry you from one place to another. So because the thought of the devil carrying you from one place to another is very scary. So of course, if you can't handle that level of uh, that level of how like that kind of a scary situation, then God will also restrict you not to experience what a level whereby the Holy Spirit teleports you to different places. So that's what usually makes it. Uh, like that's what makes God reluctant to uh, like grant people's requests because people want to see Jesus, people want to see angels, but you see you can't see angels without uh, seeing demons. You can't uh, see Jesus without seeing the devil. And so, when it comes to these spiritual experiences, you have to understand that you are going to see very strange creatures. You are going to have very strange experiences. Some of these experiences, nobody has ever experienced them before, or people have experienced, experienced them before, they have never talked about them before. So you experience them for the first time, and you have to find some interpretation to understand what it is. And so that's where you will also need the Holy Spirit to, to explain to you what is happening. So it begins with you having some form of, um, some good communication skills with the Holy Spirit, like prompts of the Holy Spirit and being keen to the guidance of the Holy Spirit here and there, here and there. Because in the spiritual realm, many things can happen. I once heard of, um, uh, this was, um, let me, uh, I had a testimony of somebody who had an encounter. He was taken to a garden, a garden in heaven. So in that garden, this person was um, walking around and seeing fruits and seeing trees and all that. Then he plucked a fruit and he wanted to come with that fruit uh, like back uh, he was like he wanted to come back with that fruit and then the angel who was uh, like uh, walking him through that through that encounter uh, firmly told that person that you cannot live with what with a fruit you cannot live with anything from this garden you can only do what see them here but you can't go with them because that garden that this person was experiencing was like the reward that God had kept for the people who who will overcome. Like it was the reward of those who will overcome. And so what God doesn't want is that for people to actually see what? The reward. Because he wants people to have faith that what? There is a reward for them. But if the people see the reward, of course then there are those who will do it, who will lose faith. In the sense that some will see that that reward is not worth the sacrifice. And so that's why God has to restrict that you cannot see the reward. And so for that person who went there to see, uh, who, who like was taken to that encounter to see the reward that God has for people in the age to come, that person had worked, like God had worked on that person to a level that uh, even if he saw the reward and all those things, he cannot come and lose his faith. Because God cares more about our faith more than anything else. So, depending on your level, God knows what to show you and what not to show you. And so that is what happens with encounters. Then another thing is that uh, when you have spiritual encounters, you realize that uh, there are some misconceptions that we have. But when you have an encounter, you will realize that things don't work exactly like that. One of such things is uh, angels. You see, when you are having any encounter, you will usually be given what? An angel to guide you. If it's not an angel, it will be Jesus himself who will be there to guide you. And the reason why is because in the spiritual realm, you see, there are very many what? There are like, there are so many things. And the devil and evil spirits know that. So what happens is that they take advantage of people's ignorance because of course not very many people know many things about spiritual about the spiritual world so they take advantage to deceive them and so that's why there is that scripture that talks about um this it was written by apostle paul the the, the devil presents himself as an angel of light so in the spiritual realm you see the devil may come to you in the form of what in the form of an angel and you will not know so how does God combat that and make sure that you are not deceived? Is when the Holy Spirit, uh, he will first prepare you. And then when you get an encounter, you will usually be given 
an angel to walk you around and teach you things here and there. So this reminds me of a certain encounter I had. It was in a dream. And uh, in this dream, I was at home. And when I looked up in the sky, I saw three men. They were standing, like they were floating up in the air, very far away in the clouds. So they were putting on purple robes. And it's like they, they, uh, they were three. So they were standing ne- like uh, kind of a circle of three people, one, two, three, like a triangle facing one another. And they were conversing. So when I looked up and saw them, one of them looked down and saw me looking at them. Then he descended from the clouds and came down to just above the, like, um, above the roof of the house. Then he, like, he stopped there. And then he stretched his hand, like, I, I, I moved closer to the house to see a clear picture of who he is. Then he stretched his hand from the top of the roof downwards. And so I raised my hand and, uh, like, uh, caught his hand. Then he pulled me up to the roof of the house. Then uh, he asked me a question. What do you want me to do for you? Then in that instant, um, uh, like, a thought came to my mind. And actually, a few days before that, I had been desiring to have an... Uh, I had been desiring to see uh, to see heaven, to have an, an a heavenly encounter. And so when he asked me, what do you want me to do for you? I remembered. Then I said, um, I want to go to heaven. And so he told me to kneel down and close my eyes. So I knelt on the roof of the house and closed my eyes. And then uh, he, I felt a breeze coming. Like there was a breeze coming over me. And uh, it lasted for about, uh, for about 30 seconds. Then uh, it stopped. So when it stopped... I opened my eyes and then when I opened my eyes I was kneeling on a carpet so it's a carpet and I look around I see a very beautiful place ahead of me there was a veil a long veil and then at the but the veil didn't go all the way down to the floor it stopped somewhere and there was some space between them the, like that veil and the floor and then looking down there I could see there are chairs and I could tell there were golden chairs and there was some table and it was a very long table going all the way uh, uh, very far. I could not even see the end of that table. And then I understood like that was the table that has been prepared uh, for those who will overcome like um, the table of the Lord. You see, for those who overcome and get to heaven, it's the table that has been set there. Then on the side going from like on the right and on the left, there were uh, angels walking around doing different activities just up doing their business so the angel who brought me was uh standing next to me he actually just like once i found myself there he stopped and then walked away to do his own business so when i stood up to try and walk around then that dream ended but you see one thing i learned was that um i had like god had answered my prayer of i want of me wanting to see heaven then number two, I, I understood that what at the level where I was, I was not permitted to walk around heaven and observe things there. But I could at least be allowed to just see it and uh, like just see how it is and how things are and feel it and all that. So it was a very sweet experience. And then it ended. So if I wanted to learn more about heaven and if I, if I had like if I was still curious about other things, then of course I will just need to pray more and hunger for it more and desire for it more. And then God will now take me to, uh, the next time he will now take me to heaven and show me around those kind of things. So that is what I understood. But just that encounter was sufficient for me and I, it, it satisfied my 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 thirst uh, up to that level. So I've not had another encounter uh, beyond that one. So that is one of the things that you will have to like understand when it comes to spiritual encounters that um, there is a lot of interpretation that you need and so it's a gift you can actually just pray to God to help you interpret things 
because the, the, the more accurately you can interpret things and the more you can understand uh, what you are seeing and what you are feeling and what is happening, then it means that you can be allowed to experience more and more things. You see, some people usually have encounters and then they scream. They scream a lot. So those people who are screaming is because they are seeing things that they don't know what like they don't know what is happening to them. They are just screaming. So of course, even you see the way you not like just take a literal example. You are taking a child to the supermarket. A child who has never been to a supermarket. Then they see a doll. Then they start screaming. Then screaming and jumping and doing all that. Of course, you as the parent who has taken that child to that supermarket. You will not want to take that child back there again so that the child screams again and causes uh, like uh, that weird scenario. So the same thing happens with the spiritual encounters. If you have a spiritual encounter and uh, you end up like being very chaotic and screaming and all that and all that, of course, uh, then it just shows you are not mature enough spiritually to handle or to see deeper things. So of course, you will be uh, restricted from having more spiritual encounters. But when you are seeing them the first time, you are definitely going to be very shaken. And uh, it's not strange for people to scream. Not strange for people to, to be very shaken, sometimes even for days and that. But uh, you will just be taught step by step. So all these things, they just begin when, one, you desire. And then number two, when you when you seek, just the same way Jesus says, seek and, it shall, seek and you shall find. So usually you just desire it in your heart and pray and just dedicate yourself to prayer and seeking God. So when you are praying in tongues and praying in tongues, uh, then God himself at the appropriate time when you have purified yourself and prepared yourself, he will let you see. So it may be in during the time you are praying or it may actually be in a dream. So most of the time, or for people who are, um, who have, a lot going on in their minds, usually God will prefer to uh, let them have encounters in dreams because in dreams their minds are uh, their minds are still and they are at peace. They are sleeping, so they are at peace. So it's easier to let them have those encounters. But for those who are able to like meditate and get to that point when by they are focused on God and uh, they can handle, like they can bring themselves to be at peace then of course for those God can just give them an encounter instantly when they are praying in tongues. Yeah, but then these encounters, these encounters are there for us. Like there is no limit to how many encounters God can give you. He will give you as many encounters as you desire, as many encounters as you, as you want. Yeah, so I'll stop there for today. Uh, if I have more things to share, I'll definitely make another video and explain more in depth and of course if you have questions you can ask because when you ask questions of course it will at least give me some general direction of what i need to talk about and what i need to explain yeah, so that's it god bless you if you would like to support this work i will leave details on the screen you can send your donation i will greatly appreciate god bless you